Now, in Studio B is the voice of the Cougars. His name is Greg Rubel, and he's here to hopefully help us feel better about BYU's chances at Washington. And I say that, Greg, because I get the impression that a lot of people are like, oh, BYU's already utilized uh, the good karma to beat Wisconsin. What, what do they have left against Washington? What do you think, man? I think the Wisconsin win established a pretty firm baseline for just how good this team can be. And if you can walk into Camp Randall and end a non-conference home win streak that goes back 15 years, what can't you do? And so, uh, yeah, if you can win in Madison, you can win in Seattle, and you can win any other game you play this year. I, I, I think it really does uh, display pretty clearly the potential of this year's football team. So why not? And with Jan Jorgensen, yes, uh, uh, we're, we're going for the good vibes this week on, on behind the mic because uh, BYU's last trip to Seattle ended in that 28-27 uh, win that Jan sealed with that longer-than-usual PAT block at the end. So we'll talk with Jan about that tonight. And that was, uh, and it's, it's kind of hard to believe it's already been 10 years since that game, but, but it has. And that's the one win that BYU picked up there, so why not uh, go for two? You know, the interesting thing I think we're all kind of curious to see is what the BYU offense does this week in Seattle, and is it something that uh, that we see maybe some better execution? Uh, will we see the offense that scored the points in Arizona and Wash in Wisconsin? How would you define the BYU offense right now? I call it the 3D offense: disciplined, deceptive, and developing. Okay, uh, I, I really do think discipline is a big part of it, especially up front, how they play the game up, up front. Uh, and I'll look at just one component, but it's it, it, it's an important factor uh, in that Arizona game. Uh, the one thing Jeff Grimes wasn't terribly pleased about, it was a great win for BYU, of course, down in Tucson, he wasn't, he wasn't pleased with the pre-snap penalties. There were four pre-snap penalties at Arizona. In the three games since, zero. Okay, So, so that's, that, that, that's an example, an illustration of discipline. They went from something they had an issue with to no issues in the next three games. There is discipline there. And, of course, the way they block and the way they play, especially in the run game, shows a lot of discipline. So that, that, that's the one of the three Ds. The second is deceptive. We already know. How, uh, how BYU looks now uh, with basically almost every snap of the ball. There's a lot of shifting. There's a lot of motion. There's a lot for defenses to worry about. So there's a deception component that I think is very helpful to BYU. And then there's the uh, developing aspect. BYU hasn't played its best game yet, offensively or otherwise, yet this season. I think it's still to come. And so I think we're going to see uh, better, better efficiency and more execution as the season goes along. So three Ds, uh, disciplined, deceptive, and developing, characterizes the BYU offense right now with room to grow. Now what's interesting is the pass game has received a lot of attention because BYU's numbers haven't been eye-popping in, in the least. Yet they are going up against what many feel is the best pass defense and most talented pass defense they will face all season in Washington. So what's a realistic expectation to think, hey, BYU's taken a, a step in the right direction? Yeah, if you want to see BYU's pass game take a huge leap, this may not be the week for it. Now, they may come out and, and, and knock your socks off throwing the football, but, but by the numbers, you'd expect Washington to have a pretty decent handle on what BYU wants to do throwing the football. So this may not be the week for the numbers to start you know, popping off the page because Washington's that good at pass defense. And they really are uh, one of the very best teams in the country, where BYU's kind of struggling right now. So BYU's 113th in pass efficiency. Washington's 15th in pass efficiency defense. BYU's 120th in yards per attempt. Washington's second in defensive yards per attempt. So this may not be the week for the pass game. Again, pleasantly surprised if it is. And they don't. And it's not so much about raw numbers. I'll tell you right now, the BYU coaches, among the different benchmarks they have for their team offensively, passing yards is not one of them. Okay, there are, there, are, there are more important components than that, than that factor alone. So it may not be we need to ha hit X number of yards, but uh, I think it's about efficiency, and that comes into are you turning the ball over through the air? Okay, BYU said one game with two picks. That was a loss. The other three games, no INTs, they're all wins. Okay, so, so BYU's turnover numbers and turnover margin and Tanner being careful with the ball is as important as any uh, numbers he might put up just in terms of pure raw yardage. How do you think the BYU defense stacks up against the the rushing attack of Washington? I mean, and everyone will focus on Browning, and, and rightfully so. He's a good quarterback, but he's not the same quarterback he was, say, even two seasons ago. The rushing attack's really where you would think that slowing that down would go a long way in, in, in helping BYU get the win. Okay, Arizona and Wisconsin are both top 20 teams right now in, uh, in rush yards and yards per carry. Well, they were both held well below their averages by, uh, by BYU. That, 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 that tells me that BYU may do and, and, and can do a really good job against Washington's run game, which is a little more single-pronged than the others, I think. Uh, and, and so they held Wisconsin 
to under five yards per carry. They held Arizona to under four yards per carry. And both those teams average well north of those numbers in their other games this year. So against those two opponents, you've got a pretty good indication of what BYU can do in terms of rush defense. And Washington is not the team that Arizona or Wisconsin is running the football. I mentioned those are two top 20 teams. Washington is right in the middle of the pack. In fact, very near BYU. In fact, Washington and BYU, I think, are 73rd and 75th right now in, 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 uh, in, in rush yards per carry. So they're very close to what they do offensively. And so I, I think BYU, having done very well against two better rushing teams, is in good stead to expect good things against a Washington, a more middle-of-the-pack team on the ground. The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, is with us on BYU Sports Nation, hanging out in Studio B. The top 20 ranking has gotten a lot of notoriety. And we understand the excitement is real for BYU. It's been a long time. It's, in fact, it's two spots lower than their high in independence of number 18. What type of performance would validate BYU's number 20 ranking for some of those fans that still aren't believing that BYU is the 20th best team in the country? Well, the fact that they've done what they've done with their schedule so far, going 3-1, and one, you kind of throw the FCS out. But It's a good FCS team, mind you, in McNeese. But Cal is a team uh, in, in getting ranked. Uh, Wisconsin, of course, is ranked. And Arizona, while not ranked, has bounced back nicely from starting 0-2. So the schedule's there. I think, I think voters... Res- there's a historical respect for BYU. Again, once BYU shows a, a glimmer of goodness, they're, they're going to rank them if, if the schedule's there. And so there's, the, there's a historical respect component. There's the schedule component. And because of that, people are happy to rank BYU. And that's a good thing. It doesn't take a lot to convince voters to rank BYU again because they've, they, they, have a, they are a team with a name. and They are a team with a tradition. And so there's that, there's that part of it which I like. It didn't take a lot for BYU to get ranked. It took just enough to say, hey, they're, they're back, quote unquote. Now, what will it take to validate? I think I'll know it when I see it. First of all, I already think they deserve the ranking to begin with, so I've seen enough already. But it, it's once you're in the game, you know, are you going toe-to-toe? Is it a fist fight? Are you proving to be physically Washington's match in the trenches? All these kind of things are the, are the sorts of things you know them when you see them and when you feel them. And that's what I think I'll, I'll be looking for on the weekend. All right, we're about to talk about something we don't normally talk about a whole lot, and I love it. Uh, we're going to talk about kicker. Oh, okay. Yes. Let's do it. Yes, let's. We're so talking about what? What kind of impact has Skyler South made on this BYU offense? Okay, he is perfect on his scoring kicks inside 50 yards. Okay, and we give guys leeway outside 50. Of course, he's 0 for 1 on the 52 yarder, right? But on 11 for 11 PATs and 5 for 5 field goals inside the 50, every scoring kick he's had to make, the kid has made. He, BYU last season had one field goal of 45 yards or, yards or longer. Well, skyler has gone 45 and 47 in back-to-back weeks. So he has two, four, he has two, two field goals of 45-plus in four games or this season. The last season that BYU had two field goals – a 45 yards or longer, that's over the entire season, was 2011. Oh, man. So seven years ago. So BYU <laughs> scratched the seven-year itch when it comes to long field goals. Justin Sorensen, that year hit from 45 and 46. Well, Skyler's already at 45 and 47 with a lot of games left to play and a lot of leg left to see, I think. So uh, let's, let's pay, pay attention to the fact that BYU has a scoring weapon at kicker. Part of the offensive arsenal now is kicker, and it hasn't been that way for a while. Okay, and that is a stat that matters, Greg, but what else do you have for us in that category? Well, BYU's offensive numbers, pure raw offensive numbers, aren't jumping off the page right now, say compared to last season, but there are a couple of components that really are jumping off the page and making the difference between last year's start and this year's start, and and they're comprised in two elements, ball security and scoring efficiency. Okay, in ball security, BYU's turnover, BYU's giveaways per game are down almost 65 percent over last year. They were giving it away 2.1 times a game last year. It's 0.75 giveaways per game this year. Last year, one of every six drives ended in a turnover. This year, it's about one of every 20 drives wow. are ending wow. in a turnover. Wow. Okay, that is a huge jump. Last year, BYU ended 118th in turnover margin, and we're still early, but they're tied for 12th in that same category right now. In their three wins, one giveaway. In their one loss, two giveaways. Okay, so we're seeing that just that, that, that alone, ball security is making a huge difference for BYU. And you can win a lot of games just by taking care of the football. But the scoring efficiency number is another one to take a look at. Last year in the first four games, it was one FCS and three P5s. BYU was averaging under 10 points per game. That number is 25 points a game right now. Not eye-popping, but enough to win three of four, including P5 games. 
Red zone touchdown percentage. Last year, 44%, 44.7, one of the worst teams in the country. This year, 64.3. It's a 20% leap, and that includes a red zone drive that they'll count in the stats that they didn't score on last week when they knelt down to end the game. That counts as a red zone failure. We know it really wasn't. That's factored in. Uh, there was a touchdown pass dropped at the goal line. That also brought the number down a bit. That said, they're more than 20% up on red zone <clears throat> touchdown percentage, and that is huge. And I brought this up on Twitter earlier this week, but uh, it took BYU nine games to get to 100 points last year. <laughs> oh, gosh. They got there in four games this year. Okay, so that, that, that's an improvement, too. So taking care of the ball. And being more efficient, especially inside the 20, has made all the difference for BYU. That 24-point threshold has been a very yes. interesting it, Historically, it holds up really well. Yeah. So yeah. You, BYU Sports Nation, you're welcome. I hope you feel so much better about this week <laughs> in, in Seattle. You're welcome. There are, there are a lot of reasons to feel yes. good about this team. Yes. A lot of reasons, yeah. Uh, let's feel good about what Greg Rubel has on uh, BYU Radio tonight as well. We look forward to a fantastic behind the mic, 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain with Jan Jorgensen and TJ Haas. And TJ Haas, yeah, basketball practices, first official one tomorrow. So it is basketball season. It is upon us. I'm very curious to see how this BYU team, but particularly the offense looks from last year to this. A change in coaching will mean a change in approach and how will it impact this BYU team. Nick Emery's back in the mix. How will, be, how will he be integrated and how soon will it look till Nick is back? And, uh, and guys who maybe, uh, maybe dipped a bit last year, can they become their old selves again? And uh, I, I'm just super pumped for this BYU basketball team. I've been watching them play a little bit, and everyone's healthy, and there are some versatile weapons on this year's uh, squad. I love them. Yeah. Great yeah. stuff. Great. That time Thanks of so year. Much. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it, Greg. You bet, Thank guys. You. you bet. All right.